Hey guys, Stitch here. Um, this uh, video is a, a cool one. You'll have a chance uh, to win one of these Stitch Method uh, badge uh, pocket amplifiers or preamps. I'm going to show these to you and I'll explain where these came from. So this, this is the front and it's uh, here's the side and the back and these are made by one of the attendees of my first Never Lost Live workshop and these are functional. This is uh, one with a battery in it. These are functional headphone amplifiers or preamps, okay? Uh, guitar goes in, headphones, you got uh, to tone, volume, and gain. You can have a headphone switch too, and they are pretty awesome, and a nine volt adapter if you want to. Uh, and so you'll have the opportunity to win, two people have the opportunity to win two of these courtesy of the video that comes. So the, the video that's following <laughs> this message is was done by one of uh, uh, the attendees of the Never Lost uh, Workshop, Dave, who uh, is an awesome guy, and I've been talking to him ever since, and um, and he wanted to just interview me uh, with with questions about Stitch Method and personality, and we, we talk about um, things I like, and being vegan, and the workshop, and stress, and YouTube, and so it's kind of like in the mind of Stitch, and um, Dave, the, the way you can uh, <laughs> win one of these uh, uh, preamps is one of two ways. Number one, in the comments section of this video, uh, you can just write uh, uh, in which way Stitch Method has helped you. Like, just tell your story, and Dave will read them and pick the winner. And also, you will uh, can go to a website that we talk about at the end of the video. See, that's how I, I bait you into watching the whole thing. And uh, you'll see the website there, and you can sign up for the mailing list on the, on Dave's website, and uh, and he will pick one from his uh, from from the emails you send in. Uh, so uh, no spamming or anything. Uh, he's a really cool guy. The interview was a lot of fun. Thank you, Dave, so much. Uh, and here it goes. And it's just an in the mind of Stitch talking about everything in my life, pretty much. And I hope you enjoy it. And good luck in winning those preamps, because let me tell you, they are pretty awesome. All right, rock and roll. Bye bye. All right. right. Well, are you let's ready? get started. Yeah, I, oh, before I, we begin, okay. I want, I want to say, well, we, I guess we're officially gone. So nobody, nobody knows this. They're going to be like, who is, who is Dave, right? Yeah, knows. So Dave here, uh, you, you came to the first Never Lost Live workshop. I did. And you built some, you actually built the pride, but one of the most important pieces of technology for the workshop, which was the Stitch Method uh, personal amplification badge, right? And so this is a personal amplifier that you put a 9-volt battery in guitar, headphones, and you can listen to yourself play. It's got volume, gain, and tone, right? Yes. yes. Amazing stuff. I actually have two of them. I have one with the battery in it. But also, somehow you got my logo on it, which is amazing. And uh, we will have to revise that logo now. With <laughs> oh, you did? Oh, yeah. white. <laughs> yeah, I know it is. It is. Well, the more it looks out, I know. I got to get, get some uh, dye, maybe. No, but... Um, <laughs> but <laughs> So at the end of our, uh, this interview, we'll talk about how to win one of these, and also I'll post a video. But you came to the workshop. You had a blast. Uh, we went up to dinner. We talked. Um, you're an awesome dude, and you came up with this wacky idea, not wacky, but of, of interviewing me. Uh, and, and I was intrigued, and I said, let's, let's do it. So we'll talk about winning one of these, which are amazing. But ladies and gentlemen, this is, this is Dave, and I think people know that I'm Ian. So anyway, floor is yours, Dave. All right. Well, just a little background about me. I'm always looking for just interesting things like how electronics work in guitars or self-driving cars or how to sell. Um, and so a lot of times I'm looking for more ways to finance my fun than I am for the fun. And so <laughs> one of the things that I want to talk to Stitch about is he's actually made a living teaching guitar. And, you know, on, on thought, you know, a lot of people can do that. But when you, when you talk to Stitch, his attitude and demeanor is different than a lot of people. And it's something I really admire. And so with that started, you know, here's Stitch, if I don't remember. Right. <laughs> oh, <man. But. laughs> this would be so great. I'm, I'm excited, Dave. All right. <laughs> like, go, go ahead. The like I said, the floor is yours. I'll sit right. here and so, do as good as I can. <laughs> we've heard, you know, kind of your story about when it sunk in, uh, how music works. Mm -hmm. From there, when did you start teaching, you know, guitar and how did that start? Well, I was actually teaching guitar before that. Um, I had okay. moved to Florida and I could play guitar. Like I could play guitar quite well. I knew like a pentatonic box or two. Um, I could figure stuff out uh, pretty quickly by ear uh, and then like lock into some patterns and some patterns blew my mind and I was like, what? But uh, I, start, I was working at a restaurant down here and they closed through the renovations and I was like, you know what? I'll just put an ad in uh, Craigslist for guitar teacher and see what I can do while I'm looking for another job. And 
you know, actually you met at, at the workshop, but the first person who answered the, uh, the ad, his name was Shane and he, uh, and he was at the workshop, you know, and, um, and you know, we were learning Pink Floyd and stuff. And then the phone call started coming in and, um, that was, that was 2006 or 2007. And I was teaching guitar like that for, um, two years. Not that I didn't know what I was doing, but I, any, you know, anybody that asked me a question, I could handle it. Uh, and then I went to, um, the fish concert in, in 2009. And I had that moment at, like after the concert, how everything worked and, and just like, like you saw at the workshop, like how it like laid out on my brain. And I started like the next day, literally the next day I got a phone call from this guitar store that was opening. They, they got my name, um, from someone and they want to know if I would teach lessons there. And I like, this is like a day after I discovered everything. And I walked in and the guy's like, well, teach me something. I'm like, well, let me show you. You know, and I started teaching him and he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. He's like, this is so way beyond me. And I was like, you may think it's beyond you, but you need to know this stuff, you know? But he was just, he was just a, a simple strummer at first. And he was like, I think I understand what you're doing. And there was a guy there also. And he's like, well, that was, that was amazing. And I was like, okay, so you, you get it. He's like, yeah, that was cool. And they hired me to... Well, actually, they let me work at my own business there and like in the studio. We had like a little symbiotic relationship where I would teach. I would paid them a little rental fee, um, but I'd also like, I love playing music and I would also like not help sell guitars, but if somebody wanted a guitar, I'd, I'd talk about guitars. And um, so I immediately, as soon as I had my revelation, I started teaching it like immediately. Uh, and then uh, from there, like it was, it was just a whirlwind from 2009 to now 2019, 10 years. I mean, it sounds like a long time, but it's like a blink of an eye. But the amount of changes that have happened in my life around guitar to now has been like crazy. But that to answer your question, I start, as soon as I figured it out, I started putting right into my teachings. Like just everyone stop, forget Zeppelin for a second. They're great. Forget Pink Floyd. You're going to learn how this works, <laughs> you know, and that was it. Sorry, floor is yours. <laughs> no, that, that's great. So before that restaurant closed, you hadn't been teaching guitar at all? No, no, I play guitar. I mean, I was, oh my God. So I moved down here I can't remember. Don't get old. It sucks. Um, so I started playing guitar when I was like 12 or 13. I moved down here when I was 26. So, and, and, and so I was 26 years old and I've been playing, I've been in many bands. I, you know, I knew a ton of songs and I said, well, you know what? Like I, I, I do love the guitar. And so I, uh, I started teaching at that age, but I, again, very limited knowledge. There you go. Sorry. But, but, no, that, that's great. So, You'd mentioned before you went to college. It was in New York. Yeah, well, I went to Syracuse University for two years, and um, it was—I mean, like, sorry if anybody from Syracuse gets this, but like, it's my—it was my fault, you know. I—I always—it's so weird. I always felt like an inside outsider in 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 literally like any situation in life. Like, um, I'd go through the motions. I would enjoy everything, but I knew it's not what I wanted. You know, like I joined a frat there and I was like in the frat, I'm like, this is cool. But inside I was like, I don't care about this. I don't care about this. You know, um, I took classes there and I went many times to Syracuse and uh, to, to like the counselors and be like, I don't know what I want to do. And they, and they would like give me a test and they'd be like, we don't know either. And I'd be like, well, why am I paying $35,000 a year for this? You know? So then I went to uh, SUNY Stony Brook in New York um, and I just had a blast there. I, like I, it was more of like college for me because I was commuting. I had friends. Uh, we'd show up, uh, before class, hang out and then go to class. And so, um, and that's when I started with the band scenario, like right around there, like getting into the bands and playing and like, I'd walk around campus and before like, you know, I lost all the hair here. I had a huge fro, you know, and, and my first band name was called something good. That was the name of it. And, um, and I'd walk around campus and once in a while you'd hear like something good. And I'd be like, Oh, you know, they're like, yeah, I saw you play at this place. And I was like, Oh, that's cool. You know? And so I was like, Oh, music, music, you know? And so music was always there, but, but I never, I took one music theory class in college. I hated it. Like it just, I just hated it. And, um, so I didn't think I would pursue it. And then I ended up with a, uh, cultural media studies, uh, degree at graduate cum laude. It's really just a study of art, the art of advertising. Um, okay. and, uh, that has, that has come to play into stitch method. Um, and we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about that, but that's, what I went to school for, graduated. And as soon as I graduated, I moved and I tried to find a band and, and we played. And that was it. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> what do you think the most beneficial thing out of that degree was for what you're doing now? Um, the most beneficial part, and I hope 
somebody who's watching this knows him. Uh, Dr. Corinne Gabbard. Uh, C-O-R-I-N Gabbard. Dr. Corinne Gabbard. He was an amazing uh, teacher. He, he taught cultural media studies class, and he was so full of life, and he was so um, like carefree. It, 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 his teaching style was awesome. And we talked about... It's hard to explain what we talked about. We talked about like why certain movies and why certain advertising campaigns were created from like the good intent and the bad intent and everything about it. And it was just, I always have been a behind the scenes type of guy. I always want to know what's going behind the scenes. You know, like I understand the production of everything, but like, can I just go back, you know, the, the backside of it. And so um, he presented that and, he, and, and just that mentality has always um, stuck with me in terms of like, in terms of like marketing myself and advertising, it's very hard to explain, but people who work for me in advertising marketing uh, know like if I don't like the energy that's put into this marketing campaign, we're not doing it. You know, nobody is to feel bad. Nobody is to feel like they're missing out on anything. This isn't the best thing in the world. This is, it needs to, I need to be able to breathe any sort of advertising and marketing um, that's like so true to myself. And that's what I kind of learned from that class that like, all the different types of marketing and why and what works and stuff. But it, to me, it was behind the scenes stuff. I'll stop talking. But that, that's what I walk away with it from those, those days. Well, I'd say that definitely shows as far as he won't say it, but man, the, this, the, the never love workshop for me, I walked out of there well, going into it. You know, you, you spend a lot. I mean, for, oh, for yeah. someone like myself and a lot of people, it's not like, you know, the $50 for maybe a lesson. It, it's more. And to, so, up until that point, there's a lot of wonder, like, you know, am I going to be able to leave two or three days later and feel the value in this? You know, that's a big concern, you know, for myself and I'm sure everyone that attended the first one. And, you know, thinking about that probably, you know, a good month and a half leading up to it, you know, yeah. and then you get there and the first night, you know, I'm back in my, I had an Airbnb. Actually, yeah. no, sorry. No. Stop there. Airbnb screwed me over. I had a VRBO that was awesome. It was the best ever. Um, sorry. <laughs> no, I remember that story. <laughs> yeah, I, don't wanna, I shouldn't have thrown out the name at all there. It was just, you know, they're like, I can bleep it out, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, I'm back there with my guitar, and things are, like, exploding in my head, you know? So, to me, it was like light bulbs exploding. So, for me to say something like, if you want to understand how this works, you need to go to this. It will save you tons of time and energy. And then... You said what? It's been 90 days since then about? About, yeah. And uh, to tell you now, like just going through different scale shapes and picking one, you know, it, it takes me about 15 minutes, but I can figure out what's happening everywhere that I'm going. And so how this has helped me personally is I have a lot of friends that I work with that will barely admit they play guitar. Right. And it's all because that fear of they don't know what they're doing. But it doesn't matter because like, you play one note in the right rhythm and it sounds good. So, it, you know, but we all have this fear about getting together. And for me to be able to get there and see what they're doing, even though they don't know what they're doing, and then see how I can contribute. Yes. That's the biggest takeaway that I got from it. You know, you still got to get your hands to work, you know, that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> to give some of your li listeners an idea, I've been playing guitar for about two years. Um, two years ago, my grandma passed away and I went to the guitar store and picked up a guitar and I figured, you know, I've been saying all my life that this is something I wanted to do, that it was about time that I either did it or I didn't, you know, I either got to stop lying to myself or do it. And so since that time, I've come a long way, but I hadn't really experienced a lot before into the, going to the class. And so that was one thing that I was also concerned about was would I have enough knowledge to even be able to absorb this. And so that was something that went away right the first day as well. It was kind of, here's all you need to know, and now you know it. And then you <laughs> go from there. And so, anyway, enough, enough saying awesome no, things. No, no, I, I got to tell, gotta tell everyone this. Like, I didn't, I had no idea you are going to talk about the work. No, well, I probably wasn't <laughs> until he started. No, no. But I got to say this, you know, um, since you and I are talking about it, and it goes to advertising, you know, I don't want to over-advertise the workshop. I don't want it to seem like a marketing gimmick. You know it's not, right? Right, right. And anybody's watching this, like, you know, I, <laughs> I want you to learn the guitar. And if we can work one-on-one -on -one together, like, you know, there was 30 people there last time. So it, it was, you know, like I said, we, on the exit interview, the, the one thing that people said was, 
uh, maybe a smaller class and maybe one more day. So that's what I'm doing for this one. Smaller class and one more day. But like, it's awesome. You know, I, I know it works. <laughs> and so like, so like now I'm like, listen, if you're on the, if you're on the fence, listen, listen to Dave, because like, it's a, uh, I, I love it. You know, like making that binder that you got, like making that binder. Mm-hmm. I was, I was like crapping my pants, making that binder. I knew all the information here, Dave, but like to get it out into a linear process, really, you know, I was up till three in the morning every night sitting there, my wife's sleeping. I'm like, I'm like, okay, no, no, race of it, you know, and, and I'm, I'm glad that you enjoyed it. And, uh, and, and like I said, like, uh, it, it's just, um, I, I don't want to over market it, but I, I know it's, I know it's pretty awesome. So I'll stop talking. What's your next question? This isn't self right, right. well, <laughs> well, one more point on that. And it, it doesn't really pertain to this, but I was kind of YouTube taught, like I'm sure a lot of your, your viewers are. Um, but I did go after about a year and had, uh, two months of lessons. Uh, my teacher was a University of Utah professor, and he taught jazz up there, yep. and he knew a lot, but he was very much like, you need to learn this, and that's all I'm going to give you, and I would ask questions, and I wouldn't get anywhere, and so after two months, I feel like, you know, I wasn't getting the growth that I needed. I was kind of stuck in the same place, right? and so, and a lot of people that I talked to at a workshop had done that when they were younger for a long time. Like, I, I'm one of those things that if I don't like it immediately, I'm going to chuck it and find something I really enjoy. Like there's life's just too short. Uh, so, you know, anyway, that, that's enough. <laughs> no, no, that's awesome. I'm, I'm glad. I'm so, I'm so stoked you enjoyed it. Like, honestly, that's, that, that's what warms my heart. You know, like it, it, truly, but go, go ahead, go ahead. Well, and it's a side note. You talk about that on marketing today. I'm selling my car. It was my first real car that I bought 20 years ago. So I'm emotionally attached to it. Right. So 97 clips. I put it on there and I, I look on, the other cars of the same make and model and what they're selling. There's four cars on there besides mine. Three of them are like, it's got this major problem, this major problem, or this major problem. And the fourth was like the email that you exactly don't want to be. So oh, this car looks really fast. If you want something <laughs> as fast as a Versa, do this. If you want this, you know, and so I'm like the rest of these cars, including mine, all have things, you know, they're 25 year old cars, right. they all have issues that they need to address. And then there's this, and it is priced more, but can I trust any of it, you know? And yeah, it's exactly. Not, can you trust that? That's exactly it. Sorry, go ahead. I hated that scammy feeling. And so I know that's, that's exactly what you're fighting as well. That. Yeah, no, no scammy feeling. You know, like when people, when I, like on the, on the workshop page, like, what do you get? I'm like, that's what you get. And I'm like, it's, it's not like, ooh, it's just, this is what you get. <laughs> you know, that's it. And I continue. <laughs> when, you, when you started on Craigslist, how did you decide what to charge? Oh my God. Um, I don't know. I just sat there and I was like, I remember it was, it was 20 bucks for a half hour and, and, and it was in home. I drove to you. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a pretty good deal. Well, I know like every, everybody in my entire life, you included, you included, or like Ian, you're undervaluing yourself. And I'm like, but I really like what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, like, you know, and so I did $20 a half hour because I wanted to be competitive. And I thought, uh, yeah, it was $20 a half hour. Looking back, yeah, I was short selling myself. And then I, I started getting a lot of people who are like, I'm, I'm giving you 40 bucks for the half hour. I'm like, that's ridiculous. I'm like, why is my friend? And they're like, you're undercharging yourself. And then, and then people, you know, who are in the business of business or, just like, you know, learning how to like charge for something that's like quality and your time, you know, and I started, I started as the years went on leveling out my prices and getting them to where, and I hate, this is another term, like, was it people, what, what's the term? Like people pay what they'll pay or like you can charge where the market will, uh, yeah. Yeah. Bear. And I don't like that. Like, as I say that my muscles cringe, you know, um, but I understand there's truth that's saying, but um, in, the, in the past I don't know, five years, I haven't even raised my rates really. Um, and, and they're not $20 a half hour anymore, but they're, they're higher, but they're not unreasonable. And, and, and I'm very comfortable with that. So yeah, that, that's so what, what is the biggest strain on your time, energy, motivation right now, or not even right now, but like in the last three years, I'll show you 714 unread emails and how many texts? 116, 116 texts. It's nonstop, like the nonstop communication from people. And I'm not ignoring them. It's just, I'm like, I can't, I can't. Like, I'm like, uh, uh, see how many emails I have to answer? And, and, and I'm not upset by it. Like, I, you know, I read that Mr. Rogers, I, I saw, well, maybe on Reddit, like Mr. Rogers answered every one of his letters by hand. And I'm like, how 
did he do that? You know, like, I, but I'm sure the internet, it was possible. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. And, um, and so just the time uh, right now it's the, um, it's answering emails and getting back to people, which I feel bad if I can't, because I have a family and like, I'm doing this all to spend time with them and, you know, and, and, and so when I'm done with work and stitch method and guitar lessons, like I go to, um, hang out with the family, but then my phone's like, boom, boom, boom. And I have to look at my phone. I'd like to see is like, is that my wife texting me? Is my mom, is everything okay? And then it's like, oh, hey, 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 Stitch, I have a question. And I'm like, okay, I'll get back to that. Like, I'm not like, oh, I'm like, I'll get back to that. And then a week goes by and it seems like a second and I look and there's 300 more questions. And I'm like, oh crap, like which one? Oh crap. And so um, that's the biggest thing is not having time to just get back to some people. That's it really. I feel bad about that. I don't want anybody to feel like I'm ignoring them. It's just, you know, I'll get 50 emails a day and, and it's hard to sit down and make time for that when there's a lot of people in my life, my family could, who, who want my time and I want to be part of the time. So that's that. Yeah. I, I can see how that, that could go. <laughs> yeah. Have well, you ever thought about getting like a, a personal assistant or a virtual assistant? Yeah. Well, I don't know what that would do because I, I, I still have to answer them personally. I still have to answer these emails with my data. So now if I hire an assistant, they're calling me saying, how do you want to answer this? <laughs> like, I'd be like, okay. I'll, I will talk later. I've, I've got some frameworks that I think will work for you. Because <laughs> really what you need to do is make everybody feel special, right? That's what, That's you what I want to do. You want to make everybody feel special. Yep. You want to address the immediate problems that need to happen, like when your wife calls in the hospital or whatever, car accident, <laughs> or, you know, <laughs> well, yeah, that was the last, last time was a car accident. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. At the workshop, my wife had a car accident. Yeah, go and, ahead. Uh, anyway, I think a virtual assistant might, you know, or a personal assistant, it doesn't have to be virtual, like it could be there, but well, I think I, that might be something good for you. And I say this with all love because I myself am one of those 116 that, you know, get lost in the mix, you know, and sometimes it's just telling you how awesome you are. So I don't care if you don't. Oh, no, I feel bad. Other times it's, it's, you know, different things. Um, but I feel like if you took control of like that part you love and then yeah. got somebody else to do everything else, the world might be better off for it. <laughs> yeah. I think, I, I think, I think you're right too. Like uh, you're right. That, that causes me a lot of stress. Like you're right. It quite, not, not like I, I love the fact that people re reach out like that is cool. It caused me a lot of stretch stress when I, when I can't get back. So maybe you're right. Like maybe I can work something out. So, you know, just right now, I know that like people watching this, I'm going to get like a hundred emails and be like, can I be your assistant? And I'm going to uh -huh. ignore those by accident. They're just going to go, they're going to go from, like, fresh to <laughs> yeah, don't think it was an accident. <laughs> <You'll have help. laughs> you know, so, so that's that. Okay, sorry. Continue. <laughs> continue no i can't wait for that we'll see what happens so with all the lessons and stuff live one-on-one -on -one stuff you're doing now how do you decide when to produce content what content to produce how much content you're going to do and i know the answers to some of these questions are i think it and i do it but yeah. well i think i do it. okay so you know there's this there's this fear okay so let's talk like the never lost pentatonic series came out or never lost pentatonic and in, in like one year, it had a million views. You know, it's leveled off to like 1.3 right now. But that like, that jolt of like going, whoa, and having people be like, dude, your videos got 300,000 views. And then, then a month later, 400,000. And you're going like, what is happening? And you're thinking YouTube is awesome, right? And then, then you realize that you just had a very cool video that, you know, never was pentatonic. I know changed a lot of people's perspective. And that's cool. And then you realize at that very second, that YouTube has you hostage. Like you really, you, you realize YouTube has you hostage. If you want, sorry, my wife just texted me, right? So here it is, like live. Okay, so now I gotta see, make sure everything's okay, everyone. Um, yeah, I hope I didn't jinx her. Like, that, no, that's no, 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 it's, it's my son buried in the sand at the beach. He's alive. Okay, so anyway. We <laughs> had a snow this week that looks just like that. <laughs> oh, snow, that's funny. So, yeah, we, we got four inches the other day, yesterday. Oh, it's, 70, it's 76 and sunny. So, so um, so you, you realize, like, and I'm being serious, YouTube has you hostage. And you realize it because there's analytics, there's, um, there's all this stuff that grades you on your channel. And you get into this um, mindset, like, oh, crap. Or I got into this mindset, crap, I got to keep making videos because you, is there, like, what is their algorithm? Nobody really knows their algorithm except for, like, five guys, right? Is it, like, the frequency at which I produce it? Is it the minutes watched? Is it this year? So you start to pump out content 
And then you, you're in this like content monster, right? And the thing is, it's like, I always want to present content that's like, in my mind, like A plus. And not like it's being judged by anyone, but like when I'm done with, when I'm done with the video, I will sit and I'll watch it before I launch it. And I'll watch it and I'll just make sure like, A, I got, you know, that I didn't like curse by accident and leave it in there, you know? <laughs> but like, I'll watch it and you know, if I smile when I'm smiling and, I, and I'm like listening to myself as a student, I'm going, okay, cool. I'm going to get this is a great lesson. I'll do it. Um, but then just recently at the beginning of the new year, I kind of made my commitment to like, hey, let, let's just refocus everything. And let's, I don't need to make a lesson every week. I want to strive for it, but I want the content and drive to be there. And there's some things I want to talk about now. And there's some that, that you know, I've developed this like, I, from I, I don't know, you know, but I've my perspective on my, my, my own YouTube channel is that like, it's like four guitar players who are like here, you know, there's, there's beginners and there's chords and then there's, there's soloing. And, and I, I'm in this like pocket of like, Hey, it's about like improv, learning how improv, I don't have lessons about playing a song of chords. Not that I think that's dumb or anything. I think it's wonderful, but it's just this pocket. And so now like the worry became like, well, how do I keep on producing lessons in this pocket where, where Stitch Method is for like beginning improvisers and like learning the mindset of these guitar players. And it's not necessarily just about playing songs. And, um, and I said, you know what, I'm just going to think of it as I do it and I'm not going to pressure myself. Uh, I don't want to put the pressure myself to, to be a content monster. Um, if I get two new subscribers a day, great. If I get a thousand uh, a new a day, awesome. Um, I, I just got to play it by my ear now and, and, and do and spend spend the time where it needs to be spent. And so, you know, I'm working on a new video series, not new video series, but like it's based on the, um, like in, in tabloids, <laughs> like I think I said this in the video, uh, you know, like who wore it well, who wore it better? Like, like this, okay. This, yeah. okay? And like who, who wore this dress better? This person, this day, this person. And I, there's a song I'm working with who there's three very famous guitar players who cover it. And I want to do who wore it better. You know, and, and so, but the thing is, I, I need time to study each individual um, personality on the instrument, and I got to decide, am I going to put it all in one video and make it, like, this long? Am I going to do it, like, you know, three videos in the month and, and, and let people decide? So, to make a long story short, it's when I think of it, it's when I have the time for it, it's when I think it's a good lesson, um, and that's, that's my answer. Ba -bum -bum. So, I'll go on for there. So, your next, your... Uh... I'm not sure how many people have seen already, but you've got a uh, jamming with friends masterclass that you recently did. Yes. Tell me kind of the thought process that went through like making that with Sean and like, how did that start out from idea? Well, Sean, you know, we, we were talking about just masterclasses in general. Uh, and he was, he was actually asking me, you know, cause I have, I have two masterclasses on Udemy, the blues masterclass one and two. And uh, we were in the middle of the Emerald writers, Emerald writers, you know, jam session and he was like, you know, I, I think I want to do my own website and some stuff. And I was like, well, I'm like, that's, that's cool and expensive, you know, on your end, but you might want to try just doing like something on Udemy, you know? And he's like, yeah, I've been thinking about it. And, and we just started talking about, you know, well, what kind of masterclasses would be good for people? Like, you know, and, and, and he said, well, how about like, he's like, you love jamming and I, I love teaching the guitar and like, and, and I play live and we can kind of combine everything together into like how to play live and jam and make it very, very simple. And I was like, well, that sounds like a great idea. And so um, we, we had talked about the idea. And then, then a week later we jammed again and we kind of said, okay, let's, let's do this masterclass. Let's just talk about how to, how to jam with people when you want, like, that was the thing is I told them also, like, I was like, you know, I have a lot of, a lot of students who they can play guitar, but they, if I said to them, okay, um, behind you, that curtain's going to drop and there's a stage and you're going to come jam with me right now, they would literally throw up because it's like such a frightening thing to take what you're learning and perform it. You know, it's just, it, there's something that, that the, the, the joy will go away instantly if, if, if you're forced to do that. And so I, you know, I said, um, let's, let's focus on it. And he said it too, like no music theory, really just being very comfortable and having the confidence to go do it. Cause once you get, it's like, it's like a pole lawnmower. Like once you're just like, and it goes, you're like, Oh, I can jam. And, and then you can say, Hey, let's jam you. Let's jam you. Let's jam. And so that was the idea behind it. And, and, uh, and I think we did, we had fun, you know, and so far people really dig it. So I, I'm, I'm glad they are, but that it came about just from talking about it, you know? Yeah. I, uh, I signed up and what I wanted to say, 
where I work, there's a lot of people that play guitar, and, and we were talking about this a little bit before we started the broadcast here, but and a lot of people would say, you know, maybe we should jam sometime, but you could, you felt that apprehension, like, you felt it, like, all the time, and it's like, yeah, I play, and you're like, I played in high school, like, and they'd give just a little bit about their background, but no one would know enough. <laughs> yeah. Beyond what what the course is for, which is being able to go and confidently jam, it actually did something for me above that, which is being able to be kind of the ringmaster in a jam where no one knew what was going on. Like you've got three other people and no one knows, but you're like, okay, you play that chord that you know right there. Yeah. This, and I could just, you know, and then everyone's kind of fear dropped off a little bit because I could say, no, just come and you're going to play those two chords and nothing else that day, you know? And it was very interesting to see how that just opened up people you know, to be able to do it when you kind of took what that expectation was away. Yeah, uh, you're like absolutely, it really helped in that other aspect as well. You're, you're absolutely right. You know, I have this new thing coming quite soon along those lines. And, and, and um, I'm not going to say what it is because I don't want to give you my timeline because when I miss the timeline, people are going to be like, <laughs> I'm going to be like, no, I have 8,000 emails. No, um, but, uh, but I have something along those lines to help people jam better coming out real soon. I'll run the idea by you. Uh, when we're done or I'll text it to you and you'll see but that's uh th- I'm glad I'm glad that that's done it because right there it's giving the confidence to be the ringleader and it's always nice and and even like when when you're jamming you say you, you play this chord you play this chord the conversation always happens like well what did we just do and you say well yeah, you, no, it, yeah, it you definitely did chord here and then you kind of played a G chord up here and they go that's a G chord you go yeah when you're playing that that's a G chord and like whoa you know and, and 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 it opens up the dialogue where people will start to learn i think it's awesome yeah, it, it definitely did that. And so we had a great jam and uh, it was a great time. That's awesome. So here, here's some harder questions for you. I'm ready. I want, you've always got this happy attitude. <laughs> I, I want to tell you, yeah, you might, your wife might disagree. I don't know. But I want to tell just about a time where like that was very tested, you know, and maybe you're going through a hard patch or me. You know, yeah, I call it the trough of failure. Usually it's before something great. Like, I'm, I've got this trough of failure that I feel like I'm in. But Ooh. so I kind of want to just go through your mind and, and what's maybe some of those failure points or times where you're really feeling down and kind of maybe how you got through them. Okay. Um, well, let's talk about, we'll, we'll pertain it to Stitch Method. Okay, first of all, you have to understand, like, Stitch Method right now, as we see it, has, uh, has sorry, it has 82,000 subscribers. And um, to me, that's like amazing. But to the world, to the YouTube guitar world, like it, I'm still like a tiny little player, and I get it. But they're the most dedicated 82,000 subscribers I've ever seen. You know, like I would walk around concerts and people would jump out of the woodwork and be like, "Stitch!" I'm like, "Yo, get out!" And I'm like, "Yeah," and I'd give them a hug. So I know they're there. You know, and and, and so the thing is, is with the support that you get from meeting people in like in person. Like I had a garage sale here a month ago and a guy pulls up with his family, comes up and he's like, are you Stitch? And I was like, what? And he's like, dude, I live right behind you. And I'm like, what? And he's like, I've been watching you for two years. I know you're here, right? And so I, I brought him into the studio and this, this is going to go with the fear thing. I brought him to the studio and he looks around and goes, whoa, he's like, it's so much more smaller than I thought it would be. And I said, well, I said, Stitch Method is a lot bigger in people's heads than it is actually in, in my life. You know, not, not that's not important. It's just... It's what I do, and it's the name of my YouTube channel, you know? And, and he was like, wow. And so the, the hardest things in terms of, like, dealing with, like, not – the term isn't failure, but, like, self-doubt, honestly, has been with launching these workshops. You know, I get such nice feedback from people about the lessons and the lesson quality. And can you do workshops? And can you do this? And my passion gets ignited, right? It's like a workshop. Yes. And then you launch it and then some tickets start to be bought and you're like, okay, are people actually going to come here? Like, cause I'm putting a lot of time and effort into it. Then a week goes by and there's no tickets sold and you're like, oh my God, oh my God, what do I do? Like, I'm so embarrassed. Like, you know, like how could I have done this? And then, and it's, it gets, it gets incredibly stressful when, when, um, no leads come in or, or you, you don't feel, you don't feel right about the, the, the marketing campaign that we talked about or something in you where like something's not right. And it really like wears on my day. If, if like, you know, I hear well, like it, that the workshop costs too much or there's, I'd love to come, but there's no way I can come. And it's like, 
Hmm. Yeah, you can, and you should, because I believe in it so much, and it makes me feel like, man, like people don't trust with what I'm putting out, and and I'm like, and they should, because I am the most honest person in the world, at least with the knowledge I have, and I don't, and I and, and I'm like, oh man, people think I'm taking advantage of them, and then I get in this bad mood, and I'm like, and then then it all it takes is me to clear my head and kind of like meditate, and then as soon as I meditate and clear my energy, it ticket sells, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm like people know, you know, and so and so there's that that that's what worries me the most is when I put something out, and I'm wondering how it's going to do because I know how good it is. And, and, and if people don't, if they, if they think it's just another cheap sale or something, like, it really wears on me. And I don't want to, like, shout from rooftops, like, you know, don't, don't believe, you know, like, I'm sure every, every marketing scheme has been used on you, and I don't know what to do on this, but this is the most truest form of, of, of teaching that I can give you, and you should come to it. And, and I'll stop talking, but it's, it's, the, it's the, the pressure of putting these workshops on, really, that, and, and whether or not people will see if it, they're really good, which they are. I'll stop talking. What, what, did, you, what, what did you have in mind? No, no, that, that's great. I mean, self-doubt is a huge one. Um, you know, I'm in the programming industry, and you always feel the same way, but, you know, it, it is gratifying, you know, when it works. At the end, and yes. you're like, oh, it works. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And then, so there's... There's that saying, um, I got a little loud, but I, I can imagine that when you have those periods of self-doubt, um, do they usually spark you into action of different things or is it? Um, no. Okay. So when I, uh, there, you know, there's many times, okay. So like, all right, you just asked the question, <laughs> I, I dropped my microphone. So hopefully we edit that out. Um, okay. So like I, Okay. How do I explain this? So I, I don't listen. To, no, they don't spark action. What they do is they, re, they remind myself, like, cool down, take a deep breath. You're in competition with no one. Life is awesome. And you shouldn't feel like this. And, and I kind of just, right, you know, okay, cool. Right. Okay. Like, I don't, I like, you know, stitch method didn't exist three years ago. I never had this type of self-doubt and then the tension that follows. Right. Mm -hmm. And so Whenever those things battle, I don't try to, I don't, I don't try and swim against the stream. I kind of let go of my paddles and say, okay, you know what? Like, let's just go down the stream and relax. And, and that usually gets me to a place that's very clear headed and, 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 and good, but it take, might take some time. You know, one thing that really uh, grinds my gears, Dave, is, uh, is, um, you know, when somebody's like, oh, check out this lesson by this guy. And like, It'll be a lesson that, like, it always happens. It'll be a lesson that I want to do in the future. And I'm like, oh, he kind of touched upon this. But I'm like, now should I even do it that's out there? But, but I'm like, my, my, my way is different. But then I'm like, ugh, why do I, it, it's like, it, 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 I don't even think of it as competition. It just demotivates me to, like, see another person teaching uh, an idea that we might teach it totally the same or different. But I just go, okay, well, I don't know if my way is better. Um, and like, now if I put it out, like, I'm, I'm going to be thinking like, how do I, how do, how do I articulate it differently? And I don't like that. I just want to, that's why I don't listen to a lot of music. I don't listen to a ton of music. I mean, I listen to Fish, Grateful Dead, Tool, maybe some Wilco. Because so if I happen to write something, I don't want to say, oh, this sounds like this. I want it to be original to me. I want everything I do to be original. There's so much happiness in creating something original. And you, and in what you do and your programming and everything, and I'm sure that there's originality to everything you do, but when you come across something that's that, oh, okay, they kind of did it this, it, now it's just like, okay, I just got to get through it until I get back to an original part. No, I, me and my buddies, we're always thinking of different inventions and things that are out there. And, you know, eventually they come out. And a lot of this is because, you know, I play with electronics. And so I'll see something like a Bluetooth chip and I'm like, yeah. well, we can do this, this, and this, and you can do it for this much. And then you get Bluetooth lights. And so, I mean, it's, I'm just not kind of on that leading edge, but I'm always like, no, there's some other company doing that. So I don't want to waste my energy going through that. Right. Now, uh, just after we talk here, I have a business idea for both of you and I. Okay. 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 <laughs> well, I was just going to say, going down this badge thing, I was in the same part with when I did the first series of, of the badges because yeah. amplifiers are everywhere. But the point wasn't, you know, to build an amplifier. It was to show all my geeky friends how simple guitars and amplifier circuits really are. Right. And you look at them. Like, if you do anything electronics, you might as well start with guitars and amplifiers. <laughs> because when I was in grade school and I started in electronics, I got to build a phone. Like, oh, nice. Through, but it was a phone. And, and so now things are much cooler. 
And so I totally get where you're coming from, like that idea of someone else has done it. But I will say your spin on it like has more value than I think you give yourself credit for it for sure. And specific examples, your BB King video. Like oh, yeah. everyone's like, this is the BB box, right? Yeah. But when you're saying, well, when you're on the one, these are your notes. When you're on the four, these are your notes. <laughs> it's the same stupid box. Like <laughs> no one, <laughs> no one has said it. And if you want to like wind down those sounds, you can stay in that one spot and play with what you want. And well, it's, okay, it's funny you say that. And I got, I, I'm, it's so funny you say that because I have this like mental, uh, we'll say problem. Where like I know it sounds so stupid. I'm like, well, everyone knows this, right? Like, because like, uh, I see it so crystal clear. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to be like. I, I whenever I see something crystal clear, it could be right or wrong. You know, like I'm just like, oh, should I even mention this? Because everyone knows this. Well, I, I just I'm assumed that was always why you didn't make a beginner course. Is because you're like, well, this is really where you start playing guitar. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> right, and so I, I, I'm glad you say it's a spin of things. Because the, the one thing that I love is like how I'll present something, and and in a video as I'm watching it, like uh, right before I launch it, like I'll be like, oh yeah, 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 and that's that's the part that like I get, you know, whatever. And then the first comment would be like, I love how you explain this. I never knew that, and I'd be like, oh okay, there you go. <laughs> Not everyone knows this. That's awesome. Okay, no one, you know. So it's so funny. Well, I mean, I personally, another example is on the. I don't remember if it was the Never Lost Part Two or if it was the. I don't remember what the title was, but it was Eric Clapton's Never Lost. Oh, yeah, I, Eric Clapton's I, Pentatonics. I'd seen that in books before, just called, like, a bass line or something else. But when you played it the way he did, I'm like, I could recognize that sound that I'd heard in Crossroads and everything else yeah. to that pentatonic. And I'm like, that is all he's doing. Like, it was kind of this, like, <laughs> you're a very smart guy, and you're not acting like it kind of moment for myself. And, uh... <laughs> eye-opening to like to walk through that and then that was actually the never lost video was good but to me that was where it all like linked together was the clapton video because oh, nice. you're starting behind the one you know and yeah. then going into the three anyway yeah yeah that's yeah, where it clicked for me but yeah it's funny because I, I i that lesson came about because i have so many people who love clapton and uh and they all wanted to learn uh sweet home chicago with this like or their tone yeah like you know, and then and that that's the line, and that's the, in the video, the pentatonic. And I and I laughed because I was like, the whole line, like, like this is an E minor pentatonic played this really cool way, and I was like, hmm. And I watched like Eric Clapton play, and I was like, he's right there, like that's where he is. That's. And I was like, oh crap, look at that, and and so I started jamming along, like, and that's how. It, you know, he's such a good player. Don't get me wrong. He's such a good player in the way he makes a home. But that's his little path. And it's funny you said that because uh, I remember having the revelation myself. I mean, like, I should show people something like this. <laughs> so I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, I was going to ask you a question. I forgot. Well, oh, go ahead. So you'd mentioned that we went out to dinner when I was there at the Never Lost. Yes. Um, and I found out that you and your wife were both vegan. So yeah. I wanted to hear about that story. How'd you, I mean, I'm guessing that you didn't, you know, grow up that way, but I'm, maybe not. No, no, you're no. like, wait, wait, no, no, you two hate coming my way. I'm gonna stop. Yeah. You know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a big boy, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a tiny boy, and uh, and first of all, I love, I, I mean, <laughs> you open up a whole can of worms. Um, all right, so uh, I met I met my girlfriend at the time, who's not my wife, and she was a vegetarian, and um, and she was like, hey, do you want to be vegetarian? And this is, I mean, this is after we started dating, and I was like, yeah, I'll try it, you know, and and the whole entire idea came from. Like I think you'd understand this. Like when you limit, and we uh, when you limit your ingredients, you have to get more creative. You know, like you know what I'm saying. It, it's easy to do things in modern times because there's so many things to help you out. But the, when you limit your stuff, can you can you do it? And it's, it's just like in music when you have you know you're playing those notes. You have to hold that note and give it more feel. More feel than yeah it on. yeah. When you have a pentatonic, so. there's, there's two notes missing and you can make it feel more. That's exactly it. So, okay, so, you know, I, I was a meat eater and I had the full minor scale and then you went vegetarian and brought it down to a pentatonic and missing some ingredients, but you, 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 the creative process behind it was good. And then she said, hey, do you want to go vegan? And I was like, sure, I'll give it a try. My, my, my analogy was going from like a, like a 64 box of Crayolas down to the 48, down to the 12, you know, <laughs> and it's like, and, and I started becoming very, very um, intrigued with all the different things I can make because I do love cooking. 
And I never, did, did, just to be very honest, like I never, um, never really liked, I mean, I worked for Boar's Head for a long time and, I, and, and their meats and cheeses were great, but I never really was a huge meat eater. I just, I just wasn't. And, and, mm -hmm. um, but getting creative with the recipes and everything and like, I cook all the time, like all the time. So I taste everything and then trying to get the recipes down. And it's been like that for, I don't know, 12, 12 years, 12 years. And I haven't really missed anything. But the funny thing is, is, um, you know, I'm turning 40 this year and, um, and I'm like, you know, I should really take my health seriously. Like I'm vegan, but like, like I don't look vegan. You know, <laughs> when I say, when I tell people like I'm vegan, they're like, how long have you been vegan? Like a week? And I'm like, uh, <laughs> no, like a long time, you know? So, I actually, right. it's just because it's Friday, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's Friday. or me free Monday. It's Monday. I'm vegan today, you know? And so, um, and, uh, I started doing, I, I met with a nutritionalist cause I was like, listen, I'm like, I sit in a chair all day and I'm not really the most unhealthiest eater, but something's going on. I shouldn't weigh this much. Like I'm a Leo. I love myself, but I want to be around for the kids. Like I want my heart to be good. And so she was like, well, you should try a ketogenic diet. And, and, and I'm like, uh, but I'm vegan. She's like, well, you can do it. And I'm like, and then, then, then it went down to a two box Crayola, like, like kid set, you know, <laughs> like, like, like I was like, okay, I'll try it. And I've done it for, um, about a month and I've lost 10 pounds and I have all this energy now. So yeah, so that's the whole, so right now I'm still, I'm still vegan, but now I'm on this vegan keto diet, which is just like, it's insane. Like how you have to think about your food now. But anyway, that's, that's that. Yeah. My wife goes on and off the keto diet, not the vegan keto diet. So I'm sure that's even more intensive um oh yeah, yeah allergic yeah. to a lot of things lots of fruits and vegetables lots of nuts and so it already kind of puts her in that limited crayola box that you're talking about that. yeah 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 <laughs> no it, it's fun though again i've um so so if another big guy like me what was, was that over, i said so if another big guy like me was coming over for a, a vegan meal at your house what would be like your go-to thing to cook oh man um don't get me started bro um Oh my god! Sorry, I got to finish this. Uh, this was my oh, next awesome. lesson. You texted me. Um, okay, so like, I feel like pasta dishes are universal. So I usually make like like this. Um, we'll say a bolognese sauce with like fake meat. Um, I've made th that. That always goes over well. Like tomato sauce and like vegan cream cheese and fake meat and basil. My mouth is watering. What are you doing to me? Yeah, no, I was, yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm like a vegan sausage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like okay. Uh, I get the bread. I make vegan garlic bread. I usually go Italian, and because it's and and I do do meat substitutes, but like um, sometimes I make like a sometimes I make like a, a, a vegan Philly cheesesteak for people. But no, no, like it, w it wouldn't be just vegetables. I would hate that. Like I, you know, like in entertaining someone, I feel like you gotta. I everyone thinks that being vegan is like hay and carrots. You know, but it's like you you can, you can get so much more versatile with it. So I try to. Uh, I, usually people come over, I try to do my best, um, to no, I, whatever meal I, I think want. vegan is going to dinner at my parents' house after my little brother's already been through there. That's oh, right. Really? <laughs> like, cause he'll pick all the meat out, you know, he'll, oh, he'll really? make it all for himself. And so sometimes we'll have like, you know, um, you know, like Chinese food, right? You've got your chow mein and stuff, but the, the meat's gone. Yeah. <laughs> really? that's, 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 that's mostly what I think of. But no, <laughs> It's not good. <laughs> That's too funny. That's too funny. No, no, I keep, I keep it, I keep it real and comfortable with that for everyone. And I should though, when people come over, I should be like, oh, here's dinner, and just like, like have like carrots and celery and like almond butter. Be like, here you go. And then they'll be like, what? I'm like, just kidding. You know? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, how do you get? <laughs> well, what, did, what do we have? You, you had the, you had the masamam pork, right? When, when I, I had a curry. I don't. I don't remember specifically. But it was a curry. It was good. Yeah, I had the masa. Yeah, and then I had. I had, I had the tofu option, and it was just as good. But like, as you know, like I'm not like, oh my god, he's eating pork. I'm just like, cool, whatever. To each their own. You know. Right. Well, he. Yeah, he even warmed me beforehand and be like, I'm gonna order something that you probably won't. Yeah. Don't make it influence what you're gonna order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was yeah, kind of that coming to the moment thing, but no, it was great. Good. So we only have a few more minutes, so I'm just gonna ask one or two more questions, but. Please. In your recent memory or, you know, last year or so, what item, you know, about $100 or less is like most impacted your life? What item, $100 or less, has most impacted, oh my God, most impacted my life? Are you, <laughs> that's a crazy question. That's a crazy, but I have an answer. But let me think about this for a second. I'll edit, <laughs> if I just sit for a minute, I'll edit this time out. But what, 
what has influenced my life for a hundred dollars or less? Well, I'm going to take an answer away from you while you're thinking of that. So okay. the longer you think you might get less. I don't know how much that Yamaha amp is, but that might be something you've talked about, you know, yeah, in yeah. that range that you love. <laughs> oh, well, I'll that anymore. <laughs> no, 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 I can't do. Okay. So that, that amp though is $299. So okay. it's, it's almost, okay. I haven't looked at it, but <laughs> everybody, you're going to laugh. Everybody watching, if they've watched up to this point, they're going to laugh their butts off. It's right in front of me. And the reason it's right in front of me is because you're in my studio and my office where I teach. Okay? I've been teaching for so long. And I want to show you, like, <laughs> hold on, let me see. <laughs> let me, like, give one second. This is so funny. I don't know if I have an example of, like, my terrible, terrible handwriting, right? Like, it's just, like, terrible. So, like, here's a tab sheet. It's, uh, this, is, this is just nothing. So, I, I have my little sheets here and I, and I, and I write in pen, and every single one of my lessons, every single one, so they start, I mess up, and I have to just cross it out. And so everybody walks away with these crossed out tabs. And I was, um, my, my daughter had some sort of project do, like a diorama, and she needed, um, oh my God, uh, these, these little like uh, pipe cleaners. And, uh, and, and my wife's like, well, go to the dollar store. They have them there. So we went to the dollar store, and we buy the pipe cleaners. And as I'm walking, I see this in the dollar store and I'm like, I need that. I need that. And it's so stupid, but a bottle of whiteout. Okay. Now, as stupid as it is, this has made my life so much better because people are walking away with my lessons, not with crossed out tabs, just it's whited out and I draw and you can't even tell I made a mistake. And to them, it's presentable. And it's not like, oh, Ian, the sloppy son of a bitch gave me this crappy tab again. It's, it's because of this one product, like I'm, I'm more secure in my teaching, as stupid as it sounds, but it's why it's sitting right in front of me. So that's my answer. A $1 bottle of, of whiteout. That's no, I think that's a great example about how sometimes, you know, tiny little things can make a huge improvement. Yes, yes. But keep the questions coming. This is great. I love uh, these questions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what book, album, or artist have you recommended to your students most? Um, the, al the album that I recommend the most um, is definitely Fish, a live one. Um, in, particular, in particular, like the song Chuck D Chalk Dust Torture on that album, it's just they're improvising. And the, I, I'm sure I've mentioned this on the channel before, but there are these points where they're, you know, they're, they're mic'd on stage and like the sound's coming through the speakers and he's back away from that microphone and they're jamming and he's so excited. You hear him screaming like, yeah, but he's not in the microphone. He's just sitting there like soloing and he's elated with what the trays elated with what the whole band is doing. And he can't help but scream like this. Is, he doesn't say this is effing awesome. You can just hear it in his, yeah, yeah. And, and it's not meant for the audience to hear. And it's such a cool moment to hear like these four musicians just having a, a, like a, a true moment where someone has to speak out and it's captured. So that, that album is phenomenal and that moment is phenomenal for me. And, and I've always listened for it. And I always go, man, that's so cool. And I get chills listening to it. But another album is the Jerry Garcia Band Live uh, album, uh, the one with the painted um, uh, theater and the people. That that album is life changing. Uh, yeah, so that's that. But uh, that, those are the two albums. Books I haven't really recommended. What was the other one? Uh, artists. So Ooh. I guess you kind of. Well, yeah. I mean, like, well, I mean, like, a bit, but it, well, you know, we'll say we'll leave it. Those, those albums. Those are the two things I recommend the most, like to people in my realm. So yeah. All right. This is, I think next question is your last question. All right. Well, I got a great question to end on. Maybe. Okay. Um, <laughs> so one thing that I've always loved is like your attitude and even your answer with how you, you deal with stress and just to like, let it go and go down the river and in your, 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 all these answers kind of goes to your attitude. What do you think was like the biggest thing that attributed to that attitude, you know, growing up? Easy. Or, okay. Great, great, great question. Um, before I answer that, I'll say, yeah, like, like, okay. So my whole belief is that stress will kill you like stress will kill you. You can feel it. It's not good. Stress is bad. Okay. So you got to try and, you know, um, mitigate the stress. You got to try and dodge the stress. You got to know how to catch it and throw it away. And, um, and, you know, be as cool as a cucumber and enjoy the good things in life. And, and the whole entire thing came from when I was in fifth grade, I had a very rare um, eye disorder, eye disease. It was so rare. Doctors had no idea what it, what it was. 
My, uh, my pupils were inflamed. They were jagged. Uh, my eyes were red. They were pounding. They hurt. And, um, and I remember like I, j just being in so much pain and, and my eyes, and this is right. I mean, we'd seen some doctors and they said, we got to go see this specialist. You got to see this specialist. You got to see this specialist. And, uh, my dad, um, he works, he, he's a pacemaker specialist. So he works in hospitals all day long. And he was telling me, he's like, you know, Ian, he's like, you gotta understand. He's like, laughter can heal anything. And, um, <laughs> I'm gonna go. but, uh, and just, just feeling good, you know? And, um, and I, and, and that just stuck with me. It just stuck with me being able to like, you know, try to make others feel good as, mo as much as possible and, um, and try to feel as good as you can yourself. And that was it. Uh, that's a, a great <laughs> lesson to end on. <laughs> you got me crying. <laughs> <laughs> you got me crying too. But not my boo. Definitely my dad. So that, 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 that moment in fifth grade just, it turned my, my, uh, my personality entirely around. And I, um, I didn't like being around negativity at that point. And, uh, and, and it healed, and it healed. It took a long time to heal. And, and I, I became like a case study. Um, but, uh, but that's the truth. So there you go. So that was a great question. But yeah, that's it. So that All right. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate your time uh, again for the contest. Oh, yes. You can go to davetested.com, sign up for the mailing list. It'll pop up right there. Really easy. Yep. Go to the video in the description and tell about what stitch has done for you. I'll leave a comment there. And those are the two ways we're going to take, uh, entries for these amplifier badges yeah these ones right here you're gonna it was be two winners and so what it's dave tested.com correct excellent i'll put it up on the, on the thing there dave it's always a pleasure talking with you it's always, it always is we should just have a part two but you can't make me cry next time you know so uh <laughs> no, yeah. no guarantees <laughs> <laughs> well listen have, have a beautiful night thank you so much actually uh, as you know i gotta go start my now uh five five internet lessons in a row so I'm going to go do that. And uh, I really appreciate your time and we'll get this video up and I'll see you again soon. Okay. All right. Take care. Take care, buddy.